So um, tonight, I want to I share something that I've been doing uh, really for the past three days, and it's something I do regularly. Uh, and it's something I didn't understand uh, when I first heard this topic mentioned. And yet now it's something that is as crucial to me as anything I do to engage with the Lord. And uh, we've been in a series uh, around the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is sent to help us. It's sent to help you every day in every way, uh, and the Holy Ghost is, um, is present. And one of the things the Holy Spirit does is he helps us pray. Uh, he helps us connect to the Father, and um, he teaches us to pray. He teaches us to commune with the Lord. He teaches us to read scripture. Uh, we are so dependent on the Holy Spirit. I love that Jesus said, I will send another, and he will help you. Uh, he will be defined by this activity. How many of you need a helper tonight? All right, well, you have one if you're born again. He lives inside of you, and his name is Holy Spirit. And uh, Holy Spirit will, will help us pray. In fact, I think it's the primary way that he helps us. Uh, Jesus said, if you ask anything, I will what? I will do it. Whatever you ask, I will do it. That's John 14, 13 and 14. But then John 14, verse 16, he says, I will ask the Father and he will send you a helper. So in anything that we ask, whatever we ask, he sends us an answer in the form of himself, which is the Holy Spirit to help navigate us through our whatever or through our anything. How many of you are facing in anything? How many of you are facing whatever? How many of you have asked Jesus about anything? How many of you have asked Jesus about whatever? All right. We'll be looking for the help of the Holy Spirit. It's how he answers prayers. He sends the helper. Uh, when the disciples in Luke 11 said, teach us to pray, that's Luke 11, 1. Um, the, the lesson about teaching us to pray ends in verse 13. And he says this, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more does your Father in heaven know how to give you the Holy Spirit? So Jesus' disciples say, teach us to pray. Jesus ends the lesson by saying, listen, God's going to give you the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> oh, he's here and ready to help us. All right, so I want to talk about praying in the Holy Spirit tonight. I want to talk about praying in tongues. Uh, this topic may be new to some of you. And uh, if I was sitting where you were and I was in my 20s and the preacher said, tonight we're going to talk about praying in tongues, I probably would have made my way to the door um, just because it was such a taboo topic for me. I, I used to say I would do anything but that. Uh, I was working for a very conservative church and I hired a girl that I knew had a lot of spiritual fruit in her life. She was very discerning. She oftentimes would give me words of wisdom, direction, exactly when I needed it. And she was operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, although I didn't know the Holy Spirit in that way. And one day I walked in and she was praying in tongues in uh, her office. And I was like, whoa, what are you doing? And she goes, nothing. And I said, no, 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 I think I know what you were doing, but what were you doing? And she said, I was praying in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and I said, well, well, would you do it again? I wanted to see it. It was just so foreign to me. And, and she said, no, I won't do it again. And, and I was like, why not? And she said, because I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and uh, little did I know uh, what wisdom that was, uh, because this is a language that, that isn't for anyone else but the Lord. It's a language that he gives you personally to use with him. Now, now there is the gift of tongues for the body. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're not going to talk a lot about that. But there's two. Some of the confusion comes around the expressions of tongues. And the gift of tongues is used in corporate settings, and it comes forth as a spiritual utterance that has to have interpretation. Because anytime someone talks up here, it needs to be intelligible. You need to understand what's happening. That's Paul in 1 Corinthians 14. If a public tongue is given to the body, it needs to be interpreted for the edification of the body. But what I'm talking about isn't the gift of tongues. I want to call it this, the grace to pray in tongues, to communicate to the Lord in tongues. So 1 Corinthians 12 is the gift of tongues. 1 Corinthians 13 is the spirit of the gift. So that's the gift of, of, of love, and the gifts are unto love. Amen. So anytime spiritual gifts are talked about, it should be unto love. And many times when they're exercised and used, it's not about love. Uh, oftentimes it's about someone flexing, showing you what they can do, and you kind of have the haves and have nots. That is not this, all right? This is in the pursuit of love. It should amplify love. It should 
uh, express love and people should encounter the love of Jesus when gifts are used. Amen? But, and uh, I want to talk about the language of tongues of praying in tongues tonight. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14 um, are, is the language of the Spirit. And, and the language of the Spirit is expressed in two ways. It's expressed in uh, tongues and it's expressed in prophecy. And so Paul is going to break down these two gifts in 1 Corinthians 14 in the context of an assembly. And so I'm going to read through this and I'm going to uh, hopefully break this down and make it super practical. I want to make tonight so practical. I don't want you to walk out these doors and have any confusion around this topic because there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of preachers that don't believe in this. There's a lot of preachers that say, hey, you shouldn't have a prayer language. And I just want to debunk some of that because I think this is one of the it has nuclear power for the believer. I believe it's a part of our spiritual arsenal. I believe the enemy hates when you do this. It confuses him and it connects you to the Father. It builds your faith up. It strengthens you personally. How many of you need strength tonight spiritually? Everyone does. How many of you wanna be edified tonight spiritually? Everyone does. And so this gift is unto that. And so uh, my hope is to demystify it, make it very practical, and to plug you into the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right, 1 Corinthians 14, here we go. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts. So in your pursuit of love, love's the target, but in your pursuit of love, you should desire gifts. Why? Because gifts amplify love. So the target of gifts, the bullseye for gifts is love. He says that you should especially desire to prophecy. And the reason why is because prophecy edifies the body. But verse two is so important. Verse two is so important. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. So a couple of things about this verse is Paul is talking about one individual speaking. So it's a language coming forth from that individual. And it says that this person does not speak to men, but to God. So if I started to speak to God right now, what would I be doing? Father... <laughs> What am I doing? Follow me here. Father, I love you. Father, you're good. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to God. So if I'm talking to God, what am I doing? I'm praying. So in verse two, Paul is specifically talking about someone speaking in a tongue, not to men, but to God. So this person is doing what? They're praying. So this is a spiritual language directed at God. Audience matters. Audience matters. And so the person hearing this tongue is in heaven. The person hearing this tongue is seated on a throne. And the person who's hearing this tongue is actually the one that's authoring or given the ability to speak in this tongue to them. And I'm gonna show you why he's given us that, but I want you to see very clearly that Paul is not talking about addressing the body. He's talking about addressing the Lord. He's talking about speaking to the Lord. It's really important that you see that. There is a gift of tongues that is addressing the body. Paul is not addressing that gift. He's addressing a grace to pray to the Lord. Do you see that, young person? Listen, if I could get this when I was 23, it would have saved me a lot. And you'll see why, because I'm going to tell you some, some benefits of doing this. But I just want you to see what the Bible says about you praying in a tongue to the Lord. And it says this, that the one who's speaking to God, <laughs> it's, 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 it seems kind of silly. It says this, for one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one, everyone say no one. No one understands. So no one understands what this person is saying. So if you hear someone speaking this language, you're not going to understand it. It will be intelligible to anyone else around them. But guess what? They're not speaking to them, which is why it was so powerful when that intern or the little girl that was working for me, when I walked in and like, hey, can you do that again? And she's like, no, 
I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> I was addressing someone else. It's basically like butt out of my conversation with the Lord. That's what she said. And Paul is saying that no one will understand this, but the Lord will. The Lord will understand. But no one, even the person using this tongue, won't understand it. And the reason why is because they speak mysteries with their spirit. So they're speaking a mysterious utterance to God who is in heaven. Now, if we keep reading, Paul's going to juxtapose this with prophecy. So he's going to say in verse 3, but one who prophesies speaks to men. So prophecy is to who? Men. Julian was just prophesying to you. When Julian uh, had the, the, the blood and he had words of knowledge that landed with some of you, how many of you, when Julian was sharing that prophetic word, it's like that fit something I'm going through? Can you raise your hand? Okay, look around the room. How many of you are edified by what he shared? Raise your hand. Okay. Julian's a prophet. Julian prophesies. So that was edifying to you because you could understand it. It was encouraging. It was consoling. It, it built you up. And that's what prophecy does. So that's verse three. So one who prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, consultation. Verse four, but one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But one who prophesies edifies the church. So verse four is so important. The one who's speaking in this language that no one understands but the Lord does not edify anyone else but them. So this prayer language inside of the person, it builds them up the same way prophecy builds the church up. You have your personal Julian Adams inside of you. Name the Holy Ghost. Paul is going to say, now I wish you all spoke in tongues. So verse 5, this is Paul's, uh, look at Paul's, I'm going to use the word appraisal. Look how, look how Paul appraises tongues. Like when he looks at tongues, look at the value he gives to tongues. Look at this in verse 5. I wish that you all spoke in tongues. So Paul wishes the entire church at Corinth spoke in tongues. Hop down to verse um, 18. Paul says this, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Now that's a flex. Like Paul says, I wish all of you do it. And by the way, I'm grateful I do it more than all of you. <laughs> this is my favorite verse to send to Peter Lewis. I'm like 1 Corinthians 14, 18. He's like, oh man, Miller's got a word for me. He pops it open and it says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you. It's a great verse to send to your friends. It's a flex. Paul's flexing. Why? Because he's appraised the gift and he says, I have such a value for it that I do it more than anyone else. And then later on in the chapter, it's verse uh, 12. He says, do not forbid speaking in tongues. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. That's in verse 39. Therefore, my brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak in tongues. He sums up what he's saying. So Paul has a high, high value for this language that is to the Lord. <clears throat> Verse five again. Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. And greater is one who prophesies than one who speaks in a tongue unless he interprets so that the church may receive edification. So Paul's saying, if you speak in a foreign language to the body, it needs to be interpreted so that it turns into the power of prophecy and all understanding are edified. So prophecy edifies the church, tongues edifies the individual. Um, so let me, let me do this. Let me give you some benefits and it's all here in the chapter, but I wanna walk you through benefits of you individually speaking to the Lord in this language. Uh, the first one is what I mentioned, it builds you up. It builds you up. Uh, it says it edifies. Edify, uh, the word for edify is edifice. And, and it means to erect a building or to construct a home. To erect a building or to erect a sanctuary. And you are God's sanctuary. Did you know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, don't you know that you're a temple of God? What's a temple? Your body. Your body is a temple of God. And so tongues edifies your body. It edifies your soul. It edifies your spirit. It builds you up. <clears throat> the, 
the same way prophecy builds up the body, tongues builds up the individual. Uh, Jude taps into this. In Jude 19, he says, uh, he says, these are the ones who cause division, worldly minded, devoid of the spirit, but you beloved, building yourself up. Here's that language from 1 Corinthians 14. Building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So again, praying in the Holy Spirit, you're building what? Your faith. You're building your faith. How many of you need your faith to be built? I sure do. Listen, if this said climb a tree once a day and it will build your faith up, I would find a tree. I, I, would, I would move to a house that had a tree and I would be climbing that tree every day because the Bible said climbing a tree builds you up. This says when you use this language that you are built up spiritually. This is CrossFit for your inner world. It is, man. This will like, you go to the gym, you build your body up, you, you paleo, keto, whatever else is out there right now. This is that for your spirit. This builds up your spirit. This gets you toned. This gets you ripped in the spirit to pray in the Holy Ghost. That's what it does. It builds you up. And, and here's something that I wanna, I wanna propose to you. It, it says the one who prays builds themselves up. And this is just, just, if you know the nature of God, if you know the nature of God, even Jesus said, you, you being evil know how to give your kids good gifts. You being evil know how to give your kids. How much more my father in heaven will give you the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying, my father's benevolent. My, father, my father's uh, benevolent and gives. He's, he's a gracious giver. So if this gift is given to an individual to build themselves up, don't you think the father who's benevolent would give it to everyone? Why would he just give me the ability to build myself up and not you? It, it's not in his nature. And I actually think it's just a lack of understanding around this gift. And we've, yeah, I just think it's a lack of understanding. And, and, and truthfully, like truth be known, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 towards the end. He says that, let's actually look at that. 1 Corinthians 2 really quickly. Everyone say, I love my Bible. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, check this out. I think this these verses fit this topic. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. So Paul's talking about the giving of the spirit so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. So to know the things given freely to you, you have to know that the Holy Spirit has been sent by him. Verse 13, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Verse 14, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, for he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. I believe what we're talking about tonight fits in that category. It, 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 I am dependent upon the Holy Spirit to take the words I'm saying to you, even though they're tangible, and to release the reality of this in your heart so that you can experience this spiritual activity. And it's foolish to your mind. It is. You wanna, <laughs> there's such warfare initially around this gift. I remember, I remember the first time um, I, I was really desperate. I, I shared a little bit of my story, just obsessive compulsive and was struggling with depression and things. I met the Holy Spirit, someone prophesied over me and opened my heart. And then the tongues thing, I just could never get. I was like, ah, okay. People would pray, like, start his engine, Lord. Ka, 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 ka. And I'm like, ah, ah. Like, nothing ever happened, you know? I was just like, I like the prophecy thing. Just prophesy over me. Keep prophesying. Like, I love that. I got that. But the tongue thing, I just like, no. And, and someone finally, they're like, hey, you know, it, it's actually a choice. You've got to yield your will to it. God's not going to hijack you. I was like, okay, well, okay. So I just yielded my will a little bit. And the second thing they said, they said, they said, you have to learn it. It's not just like this fluent thing that hits you. It's something you're going to have to learn. And I was like, okay. And they said, just look for a phrase. And so 
remember in one meeting, I like yielded my will and like out of my mouth came this little phrase, like it, it was something silly, like, like kasha. Just say that's what it was, kasha. And every time I would come before the Lord, kasha would come out of my mouth. And this friend was like, hey, it's like a little kid that, that's learning a language. Everything's a ball, like ball, 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 ball. You know how little kids, like I've got a bunch of little ones. I've watched them all grow in their language and everyone started out with a word and everything was that word. And so they described it that way. And I remember I was just, I was like, Lord, after I studied it, I was convinced of, that it was real and had mild understanding of it. And I had this little phrase, kata, kasha, whatever it was. And I was just practicing it, kasha, kasha, kasha. Kasha, Kasha, Kasha. And I was at Grapevine Lake. I lived out by the lake and I was overlooking the lake and I'm like, Kasha, Kasha. And the, the devil himself, I don't know if it was the devil himself, a demon, started speaking to me. This is the dumbest thing. This is the dumbest thing. What are you doing? I'm like, Kasha, Kasha. I, it is dumb. Kasha, Kasha. This is so stupid. This is so stupid. And immediately I had this image of a cross over the water. And I'm just, Kasha, Kasha. And the cross got closer and closer and closer and closer, and it went through me, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, it's what I hear on the other side. It was the perfect prayer. Because as we'll learn in just a second, you're praying the will of God when you're using this language. And as I, as I got that, it was like, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, devil. Kasha, 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 kasha. You know, I like, oh, sha, 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 sha. Like, eventually, Kung Fu tongues came out, but... It, it, it was just this revelation that I needed to get me over the hump. And, and I, I, I mean, I can honestly stand before you and say that, I mean, we, we pray a lot in this room. I've been walking with Jesus now a long time. And that was probably 20 years ago that I had that. And nothing, out, you know, I read the word, I pray, I worship, but praying in tongues is something I do every day. I try to do it all day. It is, it is the key to my sanity and connection to the Holy Spirit. And so I see now why the devil didn't want me to understand this. But you need to know that, that, that praying in the Spirit, it builds you up. Everyone say it builds you up. Okay, the next benefit is beautiful. It's my favorite benefit, and it won't make sense to you initially. But the second benefit is that um, your mind, your thinker, is unfruitful. Your mind is unfruitful. Uh, Paul says it right here. Look in verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So when you're praying in the spirit, we read in verse 2 that no one understands what's being said. And then verse 14 says that the mind is unfruitful. And here's why it's a benefit. Get this. Here's why it's a benefit. Because a lot of the, a lot of the problems in your life are based on the fruit of your thinking. Your mind produces fruit. That's why the renewal of the mind is so important. As a man thinketh, so is he. And so this, this exercise, follow me, this exercise, it reminds your mind that it's not in charge. Bill Johnson says it this way. He says, the mind, the mind is a great servant, but a terrible master. And so the mind is a servant. And this exercise, this discipline, this expression of tongues, it puts your mind in its rightful place. And that's a servant to the spirit. It's not that you won't get understanding. It's just that understanding comes later. Faith sometimes surpasses reasoning. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 that your reasoning before the Lord is useless. Do you know that fear is just wrong reasoning? Fear is you reasoning out an outcome that's based on bad, not good. It's based on the worst. That's the fruit of thinking. And what praying in the ghost does, what praying in the Holy Spirit does, is it set your mind aside and your spirit erupts because you're, he's bigger than your mind. And, and so praying in the Holy Ghost sets your mind aside. I, I want to show you something that um, is from ABC News. ABC uh, News Nightline, they did uh, a special on speaking in tongues. 
and uh, they wanted to know the science of it. And they came, I think they came with, I don't think they knew a lot of understanding around the Bible, but they had this pastor that they had and they hooked up and they wanted to see what was going on in his mind. So we're gonna look at this. And then um, there's a lady named Donna and I'm not certain Donna, <laughs> I think she's been to the upper room. She might be here tonight. You'll get what I'm saying when you see this, but check out the science behind praying in tongues based on this benefit that your mind is unfruitful. <laughs> In there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his It's ABC News Nightline speaking in tongues. Basically what they prove is they put these uh, monitors to their brain. And when the pastor's praying in intelligible words, he prays for the staff, uh, they show activity in the frontal lobe. But when he starts praying in tongues, there's no activity in the frontal lobe. There's no activity in the mind. And then they, they realized they had Donna. Donna was this uh, African-American woman who they didn't really tell her the cameras or when the camera was going to be on it. And they were saying this person was a little more free than the pastor because he was a little, you know, under the microscope. But she's got, <laughs> she's got uh, her earphones on and she's just getting after it. And she's <laughs> praying in tongues. And it was very clear when she started praying in tongues that there was no activity in her mind. And what it proves scientifically is that your spirit is the one that's communicating with the Holy Spirit to the Lord. And so... Um, and here's the thing about your mind being unfruitful is, is is you're uttering mysteries. And and what we what we do typically even I mean just look at the West we even sermons like this they're typically like I'm doing five points why am I doing five points so you have understanding. We're so mind led and and this activity you're you're actually you're actually declaring mysteries and what i've learned in the kingdom m mysteries are important and and the realm of mystery is something we need to be very comfortable with and mysteries aren't to be solved in the kingdom in, in the west like all of our tv shows m mysteries are to be solved like there's a guy that uh I've connected with on, on, online who is a, watches Upper Room, and maybe you're watching it tonight, but he's on CSILA, CSILA. I think his name's Caleb Castile. And I've been watching CSILA because I feel like I kind of have, you know, know him and he knows our community. And, and CSILA, every stinking episode is this crime that happens and CSI comes in and you're trying to figure out who committed the crime. And none of it makes sense till like the last two minutes of the show. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I couldn't see all that. But the entertainment is trying to figure out what the mystery is. And yet in the kingdom, mysteries aren't to be solved. In the kingdom, mysteries are just to be embraced. They're to be embraced. Like I'm, I'm walking through that now. And this comes with uh, steps of faith that we make, sometimes transitions, things God's asked us to do that we don't fully understand why he's asking us to do it. It comes in the form of what we experienced Friday at Children's Hospital. It's, it's a mystery. And I refuse to make things up about God. I refuse to, to bring reasoning to loss. It's a mystery. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna embrace it and I'm gonna trust him and walk with him. I don't have to figure it out. I know who he is and I know what he said. And I'm walking with parents I'm walking with parents that are just as resolved in this as I am. Mystery's a part of it. Things will happen in your life that you will not 
understand. It's a part of the journey. And this, this gift, grace in you, it, it constantly reminds you of that. It's a gift because it takes out of the realm of your carnal mind, sets that aside and reminds you that you, you're bigger than what you think. Benefit number three is that you pray according to the will of God. Uh, Romans 8, 26, 27, in the same way, the spirit also helps our weakness for we do not know how to pray. Now he's talking, this is a, do not know how to pray. This is a big topic. We don't know how to pray as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Ghost inside of you has a mind and he's interceding through you the perfect will of the father to the father. What does this mean? It means that, yes, do we pray in our mind? Of course. Like take a topic. Say you're single. This happened to me. When I was single, uh, I had just broken up with a girl. And man, I was tired of praying for my spouse. But I was lonely. I remember I was 20, 28. And uh, I was just tired of walking around this mountain. I dated a girl for a couple of years and it didn't work out. I knew she wasn't the one. But I'm lonely and I'm like, Lord, I'm, I'm getting older. What's the deal? I was a singles pastor. I felt like my life was in this fishbowl and everyone thought something was wrong with me because I was single and older and everyone's trying to marry me off. And I'm just like, God, stop. Would you just bring the girl? And, and so I had been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. I had nothing else to pray. And I remember one day I said, Lord, if this tongues thing is real and I'm praying the perfect will of God, I'm going to set a timer on my phone. I set a timer on my phone for 30 minutes. And, and I just, I like wrote down the issue, singleness. And I started praying in tongues with my hand over that paper for 30 minutes. Kasha, 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 baba, da, da, da. You know, here I am. I'm, I'm going for it. 30 minutes, I pray for it. My timer goes off and it was 30 minutes because I had to go somewhere immediately at 30 minutes. I hop in my car and I'm driving to this dinner and Jay McGee calls me. I don't know if you know Jay McGee, but he floats around here. I think he's an angel. Um, <laughs> I've known him forever. He's always in the prayer room. He leads a couple of sets. And if you know Jay McGee, you know Jesus. Uh, he's amazing. But Jay McGee calls me out of the blue and he's like, Michael. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? He goes, oh, you're just on my heart. I'm like, okay well, what's going on? He goes, God's speaking to me. And I'm like, well, what's he speaking about? Your wife. And I'm like, no way. And what did he say? (laughs) And uh, he's like, you need to wait. You don't know her yet. You need to wait. The Lord's sending her soon. And it it was just the thing I needed because I was thinking about going, you know, backwards. And I met Larissa two months later. Oh, all you single people are going to start praying in tongues now. <laughs> You're all of a sudden like, oh, shut up. <laughs> but my point is, my point is, is that when I was doing that, there was a peace that met me. When I was doing that, there was a surrender. When I was doing that, my faith was being built up that I knew the Lord I remember uh, recently I was praying in the spirit and I, I, people ask me all the time, how can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? And I said, don't pray for me in English, pray for me in the spirit. Yes. Why? Because your prayers are awesome, but the Holy Spirit praying through you is better. Yes. If you're praying for me in the Holy Spirit, I know that you're praying the perfect will for my life. So pray for your pastor, but pray in the spirit for your pastor. And a lot of people like, I, you know, they come and start, just start projecting when they pray. And, That's actually witchcraft. (laughs) Pray in the spirit. Not that all prayers are, but people can get that way. So I'm praying in the spirit for my kids. I'm praying in the spirit. I got each one of my kids and I got a timer. I'm a timer guy. And so I put my hand over each one of my kids' pictures and I'm like, and then I go to the next one. And I pray for each of them. Probably took about 15 minutes. And then I sat back and I was like, Lord, what was I praying for him? Can you give me insight about my kids? And as clear as day, I heard the Lord say, you were praying for yourself. I said, what do you mean? They need the strongest faith-filled father that you can be. So as I'm praying for my kids, the Holy Ghost is building me up to be the father that they need. This is how he works. 
This is how he works. My mind surrendered. I, if I'm praying for my kids, I'll start, Lord, <laughs> make him go to sleep. <laughs> Lord, I mean, which is all good and I desire that, but me praying in tongues, it actually builds me up to be patient when he's not. It enables me when he shows up in the middle of the night to embrace him and to let him lay with me and I can love on him instead of me being frustrated in my flesh because he's not in bed. That's what praying in the ghost does. So we know that we're praying the perfect will of the Father over those things. And I really encourage you to, if there's topics that are, 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 are on top of you, if there's circumstances that are on top of you, they're overshadowing it. Like you've done the 360 in prayer, you don't know what else to pray. Pray in tongues until you feel the peace. Pray in tongues until you feel the shift. Pray to the Lord and something will happen. Um, the, the fourth one is that it unifies us. I'm not going to get too much into this, but language is important in our day. Uh, Acts 2 was the righteous expression of, Gen of Genesis, um, I believe it's Genesis chapter 10, which is the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel, one language, one people. God looks down and he goes, nothing's impossible for them for they have one language. So he divides their language, separates the language, causes division among them. But Zephaniah, uh, Zephaniah prophesied in Zephaniah 3.9. He said this, he said, for then I will restore to the people a pure language. Everyone say pure language. I will restore to the people a pure language. And this Holy Ghost language is pure. It's undefiled. I can go into that, but it's a pure language coming out of you that they may call on the name of the Lord to serve him in one accord. Like in the coming hours, babbles will be established and they're centered around mindsets, but language creates those mindsets. I'll give you a topic, Black Lives Matter. Got your attention? <laughs> Black Lives Matter, it's a, it's, a, it's a powerful phrase. Powerful phrase. But it's a Trojan horse. The, 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 the actual organization had little to do with Black Lives. And I've talked about this, done a lot of series, so if you're gonna email me, walk through critical keys to not being critical. I walked through this with this community before it was a cool topic to talk about. Critical race theory. Another thing, the racial topics, these babbles have been established, but it's established through language. And culture pulls the masses in and says, this is how you are to think, and this is what you are to say. But we, as the people of God, have a heavenly language that establishes unity in regions. And when people come into environments where that Gift has been exercised in houses of prayer. There's a clarity, there's a conviction that the airwaves, the demonic airwaves are cleared out and the Holy Ghost has a place to actually speak, direct and guide and actually download strategies to impact culture. And I've watched that happen. I've watched my as African-American brothers and sisters, I've watched them in this room. Some of them are doing things nationally from what God spoke to them in this room that's having a righteous impact upon the issue. Well, man, we've got, we've got a wound there that still needs to be healed, but, but man, we've got to be careful who we lend our hearts to. And what tongues does is it enables us to shoulder to shoulder praying in this pure language, and he will download us with practical ways that we can impact culture. I'm for real in this. Because think about this for a second. If Paul said, one who prays in a tongue, no one understands, he speaks mysteries. Well, when we collectively come together, we collectively can pray in this. We're not talking to one another, we're talking to him. And a righteous stronghold is established. Demonic strongholds are pulled down. Oh, I'll stop, but I could keep going. <laughs> Um, it provides spiritual armor. I'm almost finished. It provides spiritual armor against evil. Ephesians 6, 17 and 18. It talks about the, the armor of God, the belt of truth, blessed, breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, shield of faith, fitted with the gospel of peace on your feet, the sword of the spirit. And then he ends with this, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. The devil, he's talking about standing. This is warfare. This is the clinging of swords. He says that you're to pray at all times in the spirit. The devil hates it when you pray in tongues because he can't understand it. I think it actually releases confusion. Pray in tongues. It's a great weapon against darkness. Let me give you th practicals. 
Practical number one, why wouldn't Jesus give you this gift? If you've said to yourself, this just isn't for me, I want to call you to repentance. I want to to change the way that you view this. Again, if he would give others the ability to build themselves up, why wouldn't he give that to you? Just think about it practically. Why wouldn't he give that to you? And if it's fear, if it's because it's unknown, then go listen to this sermon like five times and wash yourself in the word. Go and study it out. Go and go, Jack Hayford has a great book, um, something around spiritual language. Look up Jack Hayford. Robert Morris has done some stuff. There's tons of healthy uh, revelation around this topic, but find it and wash yourself in the word. But repent if you've said it's not for you. I believe this is a grace that he wants to give every born again believer. Uh, Number two, it's a willed activity. Um, So this is something that I used to think would just happen to me. And, and one of the fearful things is that I would be in Whole Foods checking out and the lady would look at me and I would just break out in tongues. I was genuinely afraid of it. I was afraid that I would just like all of a sudden just combust into tongues. It was, it was scary to me. But I want you to know that it's an exercise of your will. Uh, in verse 15, Paul says, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, I will sing with my mind. So Paul's choosing to either pray in the spirit or pray with his mind. It's a choice of the will. So you willfully choose to do this activity. Um, It's a learned activity. I mentioned that earlier, but it comes in the form of little phrases. And as you're faithful with little, you get more. Um, uh, This learned activity is a a little bit about the language. Um, There's no right way to do it. You know, one of the ways that the Holy Spirit prays through me is I whistle. I don't know where it came from. It's from an encounter back in 2017, but I came out of it. And oftentimes I'll either pray, you know, the the utterances that come out of my tongue, but sometimes I just whistle. And I don't know what it is, but I know the Holy Ghost authors that through me. And it's the same thing as speaking in tongues. I had a spiritual mother that was like a, she prayed like this in the spirit. I knew she was always behind me. She would go, It was so silly. I didn't understand any of it, but I wasn't supposed to because she was communicating with the Lord. I don't know what it will sound like. Do you have some friends that sounds Italian, others that sounds Portuguese, some that sounds Russian, German? Uh, it, 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 it's not about doing it a certain way. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to do it through you. So it's a learned activity um, and it's a practiced activity. It's something that we have to practice. It's something we have to set time aside for. I love emergency tongues. I've done them. You know, you break out the tongues, it's emergency, no, 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 but... But that's, if that's the only time you're using them, it's something you need to do daily. It's something you need to do regularly. And so my assignment to you is that you practice this this week. And my encouragement would be to set your phone aside and put a timer on for 10 minutes and just pray in the spirit for 10 minutes. Just try it for 10 minutes every day for the next seven days and watch what happens. Amen? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, if you're finished before we are, we love you. Thank you for coming to the upper room tonight. But we're going we're gonna to go into the spirit a little bit. And this is my third service to preach this message. And everything has been up to this point. I've watched in the environment that we're about to create. I watched uh, one person get delivered of, um, I don't know if she was possessed by a demon, but something came out of her spiritually. She left a completely different person, uh, sent us correspondence that this was like one of the best weekends ever. I watched a marriage be restored this morning. Um, I've, uh, uh, I've specifically, one of the things the Lord put on my heart for this weekend, one of the things the Lord put on my heart is uh, emotional issues. If you're struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorders, if you've been diagnosed with some type of chemical imbalance, um, please do what the doctors tell you to do if you're taking medication. But if you're not exercising this gift, um, you need to, because this actually liberates your mind. I believe, I believe one of the things this does is it cuts us off from some of the wrong reasoning and bondage that we're in up here. And again, it sets our mind in its rightful place so that our spirit can come above. Your spirit's a servant, not a master. And so what I'm gonna have these guys do is we're just gonna pray in the spirit. We're gonna sing in the spirit. If this is new to you, I just encourage you to uh, mimic or do what the singer does. And can we I don't, get a little, I love that if we're, gonna fall asleep, but I need you to like, we're going somewhere. All right, Nick, you're like ready to sing love songs to your girlfriend. 
I ain't ready to sing love songs to a girlfriend. I'm ready to activate some believers. So this is, seriously, we're gonna, we're gonna do some warfare. We're gonna go after it. So again, if you need to go, thank you for coming to Upper Room, but my heart is that you'll hang around here and that the Lord's gonna deposit something in your life. So stand to your feet. These guys are gonna pray in the spirit, or sing in the spirit. And I may have, uh, Julian, if you're hanging around, Jordan, if you're hanging around, if you guys wanna, uh, we may have some prophetic words, but we're gonna minister to one another. So this is an all play. But we're gonna take about five minutes and we're just gonna sing and let the Holy Spirit invade this environment. I wanna encourage you, if you wanna leave, if you're like, gosh, I gotta get out of here, don't leave. <laughs> I wanna encourage you. If you're like, I gotta get out of here, I wanna tell you not to leave. You've waited this long. I believe the Lord's gonna do something in your heart. I believe the Lord wants to break paradigms. He wants to shatter boxes. The Lord, <laughs> he'll offend our understanding to reveal our heart. So just hang in there for five minutes. Let's see what the Holy Ghost does. Ready? Let's go up the mountain. 